Hello and welcome back to this Slim DevOps Live episode 18, I think it is now, 18. Uh, this was recorded live on twitch.tv slash Slim DevOps on October the 12th. And this is coming from a virtually live uh, KubeCon. So uh, we're joined by some of our friends. Hello, John, how are you? Hey, Martin. Hey, John. So John's uh, the CEO of Slim AI, and we're joined by our friends from Payment Works. John, would you like to do the honors and uh, introduce our guests? Oh, absolutely. And, and I'll uh, thank them for being here today with us and, and to talk about something cool together that we worked on um, between us, Slim and, and Payment Works. Um, Alan, uh, who's on the call, is, is CTO and, and founder, and I'm going to actually let him do the do the introductions about uh, the team and such. Um, if, um, and we can, Martin, I think we can go to the slides too while we, while we and actually okay. let's leave it here. It's, okay. better, it's better this way, it's better this way. Alan, well, why don't you uh, take, a, take a shot at describing um, a bit about Payment Works sure thing. and then who the folks are on the call with us. Excellent, thanks John. Uh, super excited to be here. And uh, so I'm Alan Greenblatt, CTO, co-founder of Payment Works. Uh, just a real quick, uh, Payment Works. We're we're a B two B SaaS platform. We automate the onboarding of, and management of our customers' suppliers. Suppliers being the thousands of individuals and businesses they that um, our customers pay for their services or products. So, and in the process, we provide compliance, protection against B two B payments fraud, all kinds of wonderful stuff. And so, basically, we ensure that the suppliers who are being paid are in fact who they say they are. So that's who we are, and this is some of our the great team that we have behind us. We have uh, uh, Matthias Elgar, Tate Allen, and Chris Hope, and I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Um, Matthias, maybe you can introduce yourself. Sure. My name is Matthias Elgar. I'm the VP of Platform Engineering. I'm one of the original engineers at PaymentWorks. Um, I concentrate on infrastructure, backend systems, uh, analytic streams, and uh, build pipelines and DevOps. All right. Tate, you want to? Uh... Yeah, I'm Tate. Uh, I'm a software engineer here at Paperworks. I've been here for about a year and a half, and I've spent a lot of time recently doing more devops -y type work, especially working with, with the Slip folks. Excellent. And Chris? Yeah, and I'm Chris Hope. I'm a principal engineer here at Paymentworks. I've been with the company for just about three years, and uh, my primary focus has been you know, cloud native uh, platforms and containerization, and uh, kind of leading some of our DevOps initiatives here. Cool. Alan was a, a bit humble when he described uh, what Payment Works does. So I'm going to just say it another word. They actually stop fraud um, between a business and someone who pays that business, which is usually somebody bigger. And um, and their platform is really really cool. It actually does that, and it, which is before them like hard to do and with them easy to do so if you're out there and you're paying someone or getting paid in a business transaction environment you need uh payment works to secure that transaction and stuff works and it's awesome thank you so uh, thank you, john yeah that's, I, uh, I i sometimes uh, undersell things but uh, <laughs> no worries well, that, that i can be your pitch man that's fun um <laughs> cool so today today we're going to talk about um you know, kind of the work we did together as we helped um, the Payment Works team, Slim Collaborative, uh, with them to do some uh, DevOps workflow modernization dev experience. Uh, Martin, I think we can queue to the slides now um, and, and, and get into um, some, of the, some of the fun part of this. So, um, you know, we, we've, um, you know, as, as, as um, I think you can go to the next slide. I think we've, we've done a bit of intros already, um, if you don't mind. It's, uh, yeah, so that, you know, we had the, the, the great opportunity to work with uh, both the development and DevOps and leadership, technical leadership team at, at uh, Payment Works. And we were, um, you know, we were engaged in, uh, in, a, in a quite interesting project that they had. Um, you, can, you, can, you can queue to the next slide, please. Um, let's wait for it to change. There you go. So I, I, um, I was preparing for this conversation and, and realized the the awesome project that we had together and the ambitiousness of this uh, really great payment works development team and, and leadership. So 
at a high level, you know, the, the goal we, we kind of agreed on together in this project is to help uh, Payment Works in their journey to increase developer velocity and, and developer experience as they were building a new containerized service for their for their platform. And and I think the comma with confidence here is a really important thing because this team is not only, I'd say, you know, um, and a highly um, interested in building with, you know, with new tech and with uh, sort of ambitious goals in mind, but at the same time, as we described, they're a payment security company and a payment company uh, at their core. And they need to do that uh, responsibly with confidence so they know they're putting good stuff out there. And so I think the, at a high level, what, you know, the, the, the goal was, was to work together to, um, to find a way to transform some of the things they're doing. They picked uh, sort of the, the um, I call it the triple Lindy of, of DevOps. They were, um, you know, building a new service that, that was going to be an important part of their, of their application going forward. Um, second, they were doing this with some new technologies and containerizing this and, and trying to help their developers embrace uh, some of that new tech stack. And then third, they wanted to build a great developer experience and, and start to establish a platform going forward where they can really lower DevOps friction and confidence in delivering great um, containerized services. So that was pretty cool. And um, here was to them that they got it done, as, as Alan or I think someone on the call earlier said, and we landed the plane on time in, you know, on the runway and all the passengers were happy and, and the crowd cheered. So kudos to them they, for doing all that. We, and they didn't know we changed the engine while they were flying. <laughs> yeah, that's the cool part, right, Alan, is that, um, you know, you've got all this new stuff and the plane went, went faster and smoother and all that. And so that's very cool and very ambitious and, and awesome. Can you, can you switch to the next slide? Because we'll um, I'll let the, the team talk a little bit about those challenges as Alan was alluding to. So, um, you know, th there were some ambitious things in mind. Um, can, can the team talk a bit a bit about some of the you know the goals that we set out to, to solve together and um any any of you can jump in chris matias alan or tate um tell us tell us about you know what we we're trying to accomplish chris you want to grab this sure i can uh, i can start and i'll probably uh, ask matias to help you out here um so we started with a kind of in our current situation we have a, a couple small microservices but we're still largely kind of working through and converting a monolithic deployment process into uh, more of a microservice containerized uh, world. Um, but we're trying to do this again, you know, while we're still moving. So we have existing build processes and, and patterns and workflows, you know, around merging our code and creating our code that uh, we didn't want to get rid of because you know, our developers rely on them right now to, to make progress. Um, and we are also looking for uh, a little bit of um, help, you know, to, to get a scalable solution that would require us to not have to build so much um, internally, right? So, uh, and then the final piece was, you know, compliance and, and production ready uh, containers. So, um, you know, we want to make it so that developers can kind of decide to move something to, to production or stand up a new microservice without having to go through some kind of, you know, rigorous security review where we're vetting each individual container that they're using. Uh, we want to kind of give them an experience where they can decide to move something into production and by going through kind of our, our core workflows that we developed and, and we work on integrating with Slim, um, they can leverage an off the shelf solution that we know, you know meets our, our standards in terms of security, auditability, compliance, uh, that gives us uh, a nice integration with our existing workflows so that we don't need to do a lot of you know, re-education on how our developers interact with uh, our build processes and pipelines. Um, and then you know eventually allow developers to be more self-service so that they can make decisions um, at a localized level and, and ultimately move move faster, right? Which is the kind of the end goal of everything that we're doing in the in the DevOps world these days. Um, maybe Matisse, do you want to add anything there? Yeah, so, so uh, the, the the design or the, the architecture that Chris and Tate uh, designed here, um, what was essentially a new pattern for us to be able to um, build new containerized services uh, quickly uh, and, and using Slim uh, in a way that we can just build uh, additional services much more quickly in the future we wanted to stop adding to the kind of the, the monolithic application that we currently have and um and so through this project we're able to to have that kind of um uh, that that new build process uh that we can use for future projects yeah, that, yeah, yeah well, sorry, go ahead. And one more thing to what matias said you know we get a lot of inertia right when when we have uh, our existing processes and patterns um you're trying to do something new and you're trying to do it quickly uh there's just so much um Kind of you know momentum to just follow what you've done before and uh part of part of the real value that we we're trying to get out of our, our integration with slim was to 
kind of make it easier for us to do something new uh, as opposed to just kind of fit into the same patterns we fit into before. Exactly. Yeah, it's uh, it, it, maybe it's easier for developers to estimate how much time it's going to take to stand up a new service doing it the old way. But um, like, for example, the, the work that uh, that we've done here uh, with, with Docker Slim, we're going to take advantage of uh, in, in about two weeks, we're standing up a new service. Excellent. I, I believe, you know, in the in the in the precursory conversations to, to the actual work we did here, there was a kind of had a dual uh, dual ambition in, 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 in large um, and sort of in gross measures. The first is to get really great developer um, velocity and and low friction, meaning that you know not a lot of manual things to do to get that next service stood up. And and, and as as the service evolves and changes, as, as new versions of containers come out, wanting to be able to have the deployment process, that getting that from I just built it to something I'm confident will get into production in the right way with semantic. Um, versioning and all that without a lot of bookkeeping or scripts to maintain or all that. I think that was a part that was like initially a core part of what we were trying to do. And I think we achieved it. Alan, in, in one of the conversations we had, you're also, you know, that that velocity um, comes needs to come with responsibility and the idea of confidence, right? Um, I remember a conversation we had where you described this idea of making sure we we wind up with Debex, you know, great developer experience and, and velocity, but at the same time, consistency. Can you can you kind of Recall some of those uh, conversations. Yeah, for, absolutely. Uh, you know, for a long time, you know, we had this monolith that we were trying to break into services, and uh, you know, and it's always that battle of uh, well, we have the thing that works, and we have the place we want to go, and we think about the uh, you know the lift to get there and the management behind those services, and so it's easy to say, oh, just we'll do this. It's great. It's the great way to do this. Um, but uh, you know, this is one of the things we're really looking forward and and are are already getting the benefits out of with with Slim, uh, being able to um, you know help us manage all that complexity. So you know it's easy for developers to say, oh great, we have these different services, we can you know and everyone can just be uh, you know manage their own little service and. Great, and then we end up with you know fifty, a hundred, plus thousand, whatever services with all written in different languages, and and like how do we control that? How do we provide the security around that? And you know it's easy to say, well, just make it great for the engineers to do whatever they want. Well, at the same time, you know within reason, we have you know some corporate policies and ways to manage, and we don't want people just doing willy nilly. Especially, you know, we are a security platform. Uh, security is critical and having the proper governance around that. So managing that balance between uh, having the developers go as fast as they can and be as creative as they want and still being able to balance that with this gov level of governance that we can provide around that. And, uh, you know, also it helps me sleep at night knowing that, you know, that we're not just, you know, unleashing for people to do whatever. Uh, and yet people on the other hand, the developers are feeling like, yeah, this is great. I can go do this and uh, develop things in a modern way. And, um, you know, so it kind of breaks that break that chicken or egg. Like, how do you proceed in, when you're trying to do this? But yeah, I, I mean, think give developers an easy way to do the right thing and they'll do it. And, and exactly. that uh, make it makes it real fast. To, make it easier for them to do the right thing. Right. Yeah, so you know, we we were talking, you know, s some years ago, we we were hearing that there are simply not enough developers in the world. You know, we, we are time poor already. There are not enough developers to do the work that's required, and there are not enough new developers entering the job market globally in order to pick up, you know, the ever increasing amount of work that's coming along. And so that's given rise to sort of this whole developer experience movement in order to. Um, make computers do more of the humdrum tasks that you know people aren't best um, service to actually take on and get the computers to handle the automation and I think one of the things that you were seeking to do was take a familiar sort of GitOps workflow and apply that to the way that your container workflow uh, operated. Yeah I think you can go to the next slide I think there's a there's a I mean, Matthias uh, had a quote in one of the conversations we had, uh, you know, the, the idea that just knowing simply what 
what you you know what what the latest versions of things are in in the sort of in the uh, you know in the post build artifact world is not that simple when you think about I want a combination of human readability but also semantic um, integrity right you want a machine to machine accuracy and human to interface uh, uh, understandability um, you know organizations typically roll their own on this kind of thing think about in the space where um, you have uh, let's say a docker compose file and a bunch of containers and and and, and that's changing constantly um, Matthias kind of shine a little more light on that on that idea yeah. and this idea of, of being able to manage that easily because lots of organizations struggle for sure yeah this is a uh, like for us you know having containers is great having containerized applications or uh, any applications we run generally um, whenever we have a problem in production we have to work backwards um, and try to reproduce it if, if it's an existing problem and an ongoing problem uh, and, and at some point if it's a containerized app um, we we need to try to reproduce in a local environment and uh, try to pinpoint the problem and if we can't figure out quickly uh, what version we're running and, and tie it to a specific commit in GitHub. Uh, we're just wasting time. So um, this is the kind of challenge uh, that Docker Slim helps us uh, fix. Yeah, so Git um, doesn't, you know, the sort of Git flows don't live typically in the post-build world. They live in the pre where code lives, right? Not where containers live. And I think that's an interesting right. outcome that's that's evolving here with your team and, and the Slim platform. Um, Martin, can you advance the slides, please? Let me just, for orientation for everyone, uh, just tell a little bit about what Slim.ai does and what the developer platform is all about. So Slim is a company that uh, sort of exists to make uh, building containerized services easier for developers and, um, and, 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 and optimizing those and building production grade, production ready containers as fast as possible and putting a lot of power in the hands of developers to, to, to do that easily. Like uh, Chris was mentioning earlier, standing up services faster but also have the confidence that the services you're building are consistent and production ready and have all the right properties and, and they're traceable and manageable and all that. So um, and the next slide, please. Um, you know, really a lot of what we do is, is trying to build capabilities that allow uh, organizations to achieve something called container best practices uh, on their own terms, simply through um, a combination of our open source. You may have heard of it, uh, Docker Slim, uh, as Matthias has, has referenced. That's an open source tool that allows you to rapidly understand and optimize containers. It's, it's really popular, 11,000 stars, et cetera. And we've built a slim a SaaS platform called the Slim Developer Platform that's being used by, um, by uh, the Payment Works team to, to start along a journey of being able to, to actually roll out container best practices and developer self-service with containers um, to be able to accomplish the, the bulletized goals that they're in that, in that left column, which is managing image composition, controlling what's inside, and, you know, being able to reduce image size easily, optimizing, and uh, making awesome microservices that are actually consistent and compliant and fast and secure, but making it so developers have those tools in their hands. Um, and that you know, folks like Alan, again, can, can feel confident that the organization's building well and fast. Um, next slide, please, Martin. The platform itself, um, you know, this is a kind of a high level block diagram depiction. The developer platform has three main parts. It has uh, tools that face developers uh, that they can access through both CLI and, and through um, our user interface, portal.slim.dev, to integrate um, with the developer workflows, to, to assist them through the tools, to be able to understand, evaluate, analyze, control containers. We have something called the container pipeline in this that allows you to process containers and work with containers that are flowing into the, our system um, referentially through various places like information from repos and CICD systems and registries. And, and, then, um, and then, you know, we keep track of this stuff and uh, I'll use the best term I can come up with an artifact catalog. We have something we call collections, which allow you to manage stuff about containers and organize them. And this is a feature of our platform that the Payment Works team made a lot of use of as they interacted with our, you know, as they build containers, it interacts with our CI CD system. The payment works tell you all about that. The payment works team will tell you all about that in a little bit. So we're sort of this, um, this system that fits with your existing DevOps workflows and provides a layer of, of intelligence about containers and the applications you're building to help developers go faster with confidence. Next slide, please, Martin. 
Um, you know, the, the feature I mentioned earlier, collections, is this is a depiction of kind of the, the, the raw materials that go into that. So we've got the Slim Developer Platform. It allows you to connect to registries um, and also interact with systems through our CLI. And CLI is what the Payment Works team used to integrate into their CICD flow. We'll talk about that later. But once you can, can get uh, that information into our platform through those means, we can then start to build uh, container collections. You see there in the lower right part of the screen, which is um, think of it as a sort of an advanced metadata bookkeeping system for what's going on with those containers. And it also allows our system to make reference to those as those containers live in any registry. Um, so we, we today can interact with ECR and GCR and Docker Hub authenticated or, or, you know, or public. Um, well, those collections can, can refer to those containers. We don't actually store containers, but we store information about containers. And one of them is where it is. Once a, collect, once, a, once a container is entered into that realm of, of management, you can start to do things like process them, um, evaluate them, search them, um, and so on. And we can actually search across multiple registries and it allows developers to have an extended kind of metadata control over containers and more. Um, and our system's expanding beyond that. This is a feature set that uh, the Payment Works team uh, exploited quite a bit to, uh, to optimize their workflows. Uh, next slide, Martin. Um, yeah, so let's let's go into the pipeline implementation um, that we used, and I'll and I'll turn it over to Chris. I think in this case, and you can draw on your team as needed. But um, describe to us what what, what we built uh, at at PaymentWorks together, and um, and and what what you're doing with uh, with our system today. Definitely. So, um, kind of as we hit on before, one of the kind of challenges for us is that our, our developers think in terms of you know Git commits and and tags. And you know, on the operation side, we want to think about things in terms of uh, you know containers. So uh, what we've done with the the Slim team is try to find a way to um, integrate kind of our our a a point in time uh, version of what our containers look like through a uh, what we call a pinned Docker Compose file. So uh, every Docker image will have a uh, a digest, which is like a unique identifier, very similar to uh, you know, Git commit SHA. Um, and so you know, we can apply tags uh, or labels on a on a um, an image that's stored in a ECR, for instance. But those images can be shifting and they can move. So you know what what version one is today, um, you're not guaranteed to get you know the same version uh, as version one tomorrow. Uh, with the digest, those problems kind of go away. So uh, what we've kind of worked here to do is to start from a concept of um, you know on a on a merge to our our develop branch, right? We want to do a bunch of things that we kick off. We want to run a CI uh, job. You know, if our CI fails, we want to bail uh, at that point. If CI passes, we want to continue. And once we have a verified CI run, and we know that all the containers that we want to run together in a unit work uh, and play well, they've passed our tests, they've passed our um, kind of uh, audit and compliance requirements, we want to bless those containers, essentially. Uh, then integrating with the, the Docker Slim uh, collections concept, which is a, a really powerful kind of tool for us. Um, we can increment the container versions uh, in the collection, let Docker Slim manage all of that, and then essentially ask them to provide us what we call a, a rendered Docker Compose file. And this would be kind of like a, a point in time version of, of what they're managing for us. So, so for instance, um, if we have a, a Docker Compose file that would run three images together, and you know, all three of these containers uh, need to run you know, in a unit and they, they play together and uh, they can communicate successfully. Um, we want to deploy those as one deployable unit. And then, as, as Matthias was mentioning earlier, you know, if we have to debug something, we want to be able to spin up you know, the same set of three containers uh, on our laptops to be able to debug that way uh, and get a very, um, I'll say, holistic view of what we're running in production. So you know, in this case, you know, if one of our containers increments, we would you know, build the new container. Uh, we do a test cycle. You know, we'd verify that the container passes the CI. We would then reach out to the Docker Slim Collections API. And uh, once we do that, they would increment the version on their side. Uh, at that point, we can ask them for a rendered compose file. Uh, the rendered compose file includes the digests and, and all the other metadata that we have. Once we have that, we actually stash that back into our GitHub repository. Uh, and now we're able to say that you know at this version of the code, uh, in a semantic version in Git, this was the set of containers that we were running in production at that time. Uh, and anybody uh, from a team who needed to debug anything would be able to you know, check out that version of the code. And again, that's how our developers want to think. They mostly want to think in terms of, you know, this is version you know, 1.11.0 of the code. 
um, and that's that's the git tag that we've applied. At that point, we pulled the compose file. Uh, a developer could you know spin up those containers locally, and we actually have a a kind of a one to one representation of what's running on their laptop with what's running in production in real time, uh, allowing us to kind of close the loop uh, and have um, a full view of exactly what it is we're running uh, at each point in time uh, in production. Uh, probably turn it over to Matisse Tate for more. Uh, Tate, Tate will probably be the guy who's used it the most. Uh, but Matisse might have a little more insight into kind of our motivations here. Yeah, no, that, that, was, uh, that was great, Chris. That's exactly what we did. And I guess to summarize, like the two main things that we needed out of, out of our process was to be able to A, build a container once and then essentially verify it and run tests on it and promote it all the way to production through QA. So we're not rebuilding images with different things, different contents and code and stuff like that. But not only that is that we have the uh, we have multiple containers running simultaneously. So we're not just uh, shipping to production one single container. We're shipping more than one. In our case, two, soon to be three. Uh, so we now need to need the concept of, like Chris said earlier, like a the ability to treat multiple containers as a single shippable unit. And uh, Docker Sun allows us allowed us to do that uh, very quickly with their Docker Compose generation functionality that we use. Yeah, the the the, the collections concept is a great way to represent a service that's uh, multiple containers, you know, sidecars, a primary service, whatever. Very useful. Right. So uh, you know, I think in some of the conversations we've had, you know, the kind of kind of the important stuff that's going on here is, is first, you're able to keep track of multiple contexts. Uh, mm -hmm. Tate mentioned it as part of what he said. It's like, you wanna be able to have confidence that you're that you're referencing the right set of things with the right articulation, manifest, et cetera. That could be on a developer's workspace where they're you know, developing locally, or maybe they've promoted it to their, their personal sandbox somewhere up in the cloud, or that could be going to your test environments or to your production right. environments. Um, and I think there's a key thing there that as you promote these different things, you could use concepts like pinning or even the collections themselves to keep track of that. And now you now you um, you know that as it passes its phases, you can just promote sets of things to be ready for that next uh, next phase. And 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 you'll you'll be able to use this uh, collections features to help you through those management. And I think uh, another thing that um, is, is important to point out is the team implemented in such a way so there's hands off. I mean the this just happens as builds happen and and the context reside in sort of the set of things that you've you know the way you've organized the collections in, in a way that um you know new shahs you know new containers get built those are new shahs right you get semantic versioning in these in these um with your containers that you don't have to worry about like latest being being kind of not the right version of that container this semantic integrity kind of flows automatically through your build pipeline and a hands off you don't have to touch scripts no one has to think about that and you know mm -hmm. that docker compose file is going to work um you know when you when you move it to that environment how, how's that transformed like um how would you have done it otherwise like what what's you know what are some of the things you learned uh, as, as you've done this to make you know that, that kind of makes your life easier i think uh there's actually another another slide where we have uh, written out uh you know a chat message that i said to, to josh that was kind of our our without slim uh, workflow, um, and there was a lot of stuff that we had to manually build um, to to do this. It requires, you know, some uh, manual manipulation of the Docker Compose files on our side, you know, through regex and kind of introspection, um, you know, into the, the digests, uh, which is not something that we were particularly interested in getting involved in. Uh, um, and essentially, what we've got to now is, um, you know, on a merge, uh, this all kicks off, um, and it kind of just happens, and. Uh, there's, there's one other feature of the collections that I, I, I want to mention that we've we've talked about and uh, we're trying to still work into leverage currently, but it's kind of this concept that uh, what we want to run and maybe in a local environment may be more uh, or different than what we want to run in production, but it's all the same underlying containers. Uh, and so, you know, an example of this would be, um, you know, we have logging and analytics tools and we have, you know, real infrastructure that runs this in production. So we don't need those containers when we're running this locally. Um, but some of the features of the Slim collections would allow us to um, add in more containers to debug. Uh, you know what happens if right. we need to take these production containers and run them on our laptops where we don't have you know a elastic a managed Elasticsearch service, uh, for instance, right? We want to run this in a container, but we don't need that container in production, but we do need it in uh, in our in our local environment. And you know, how do these containers all work together when uh, we want to build them once, or run them once, have one grouping? 
and now have the groupings be different. It, it kind of almost violates the uh, the immutability that you want. But with the collections, we should be we, we um, almost are able to right now uh, kind of get the um, different kind of run modes uh, based on which environment we're running in with one set of containers, which is another kind of big big item for us that I wanted to make sure we, that, we touched that, on. Yeah, that was, yeah. I was trying to figure out how, how to articulate that one. I was, I'm glad you brought that one up, Chris, because that was a big one in terms of not just the local environment, but as we test, we might have different environments. Uh, you know, as we run it through different environments, there might be, in some cases, managed services, but on a different environment, it's not a managed service, and, or it's not, that service doesn't even exist. And yes, ideally, everything is identical everywhere, but in practicality, it's not. And right, so uh, it's still with the practical aspects of this. And, well, the, the cool part about this, and it preludes into some futures that we want to work on together, is that once a container can be uh, manifested in our collections, well, then you can apply our pipeline, the processing pipeline in the Slim platform to do manipulations to those containers as a kind of a build augmentation. For instance, we can, um, when, for instance, if you flip a pin from, from, a, from a, a, you know, sort of a test environment pin or a test environment collection reference to a fraud, at that point, we can invoke in the future um, some of our optimization capabilities like, oh, add the APM agent to that. And by the way, minify it so that it has the minimum number of, 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 of files and minimum number of vulnerabilities, of course, comes along for the ride. But there's a kind of a, you know, a, a sort of a context or stage appropriate treatment of the containers that can be kind of recorded in the, in the policies that go along with collections this is a feature set that we hope to, you know, we're, we're still building some of that ourselves inside of Slim, but um, you know, the, the cool part is that you've got this automation that registers your containers in the collections. And now um, as you process them going forward, it can be sort of a context appropriate processing and, and also um, come along for the ride, a lot of security uh, analysis. And Chris, we also, I think you, you also have ambitions to kind of continue to um, leverage this in your developer teams to um, interact with this, like you said, for local environments. The, um, I showed it earlier in the picture that there's a lot of just, just container analysis and review tools that come along for the ride with this as well that I think you're, you're hoping to leverage too. Yeah, for, for sure. Um, you know, the collections, uh, I kind of wanted to touch on the collections because for me, it, it took a minute when we started talking about it. Like I had an aha moment, you know, maybe two or three conversations in where I was like, oh, collections and it, and it clicked. Um, but once we, yeah, exactly right. Once we have this integration, you know, with the Slim platform, um, essentially we get all the other value adds basically for for free. Uh, you know, um, we don't have to do any additional work on our side. You know, is the security scanning. Um, given this workflow, uh, we get security scanning as soon as we are pushing images and, and linking the images in our ECR repository to to the Slim platform. Uh, we get that for free. Uh, we get you know, minification, something else that uh, that John was mentioning, and. Uh, you know, the ability then to say, uh, you know, the, the um, ability to hinge the collections uh, on the environment would allow our local developers to use a command line tool to say, you know, give me the local version of this production, you know, uh, running version. Um, so they can go to Git, you know, they get the Docker Compose file that's there too. Um, so they can kind of see exactly what ran in production. But then if they wanted to say, uh, show me the kind of localized version, they can use the command line to do that. Um, and that would, potentially layer in, you know, these other tools that we talked about, you know, we want to run like, uh, like Alan was saying, you know, you, you want to run maybe your MySQL database in, uh, in a container when you're running on your laptop, but you certainly wouldn't want to do that, you know, in production uh, at scale, of course. So uh, you need to augment and modify what you're doing in some cases. Uh, but with the concept of collections, you know, again, uh, with this workflow, that, that becomes something that from mm -hmm. our team's side, I know that the Slim team has to do, to do work to make this reality for us, but, um, this is stuff that we get on um, payment works for free essentially Very it's cool. quite remarkable sort of the mission you set out on here because you were you were working in a predominantly sort of vm centric world and, and not only taking on the migration to sort of you know a cloud native way of working and moving to microservices but you've also taken the next leap which i think a lot of organizations are really looking to um to crack uh, crack this one which is bringing sort of a git ops workflow to your container life cycle and i think it's absolutely fabulous the work that you've done to achieve that because i, I mean are you there yet are your containers able to move at the speed of git 
we're uh, we're just about there. We're getting we're getting uh, getting close to the the final form of this. And um, again, we're going to get another chance to kick the tires as we've gone. So we started with a kind of sample project that had um, again, and it, it was I say sample. Uh, this was a very mission critical project for us. Uh, this was not something that we were undertaking lightly. Um, it was very core core to our business and what we needed to accomplish. So, you know, the the risk of taking on new technology was real. Um, and uh, not only did you know Slim help us with kind of this workflow, but they also helped us kind of rationalize what we were doing. You know, they were, they were uh, everybody on the team was very helpful in like getting us to think about what it is we were trying to accomplish and what we could do on a quick time frame uh, that would meet all of our, our security enhancements. And um, now we're going to get another chance to go back. I think we're adding, as Tate said, we have you know two containers that we're running in this in this service that we had deployed. We're now going to number three. Um, and as we do that, we're continuing to, to drive this integration. Um, we're like right at the we're right at the cusp of full automation here uh, right now with a, a few more pieces and then and then we'll have it and I think as part of this upcoming work we do we'll be uh, you know finally going like all the way full cycle through this where we're probably I don't know I'd say 80 85 or 90 percent of the way there right now. Excellent, uh, Martin. Can you advance a, a few slides um, probably to the Chris's quote I think is uh, and he, he described the kind of things that he had to do to to. Yeah, this is the this is the what you referenced earlier, Chris. Just the kinds of things you'd have to do to get all this working, um, and and of course a lot of lifecycle management comes along for the ride with this, especially as you want to transform uh, this to multiple services. Um, anything else uh, you want to share about kind of the work to be done? <laughs> yeah, a lot of this. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Tate. I was going to say it does not scale uh, remotely. <laughs> the multiple projects, and multiple images, so. Yeah, from from our previous uh, diagram, we started and we were, you know, we were working with with Slim at the same time we were building it. So sometimes, so in some of the cases, you know, we on our, our payment work side, we built a little bit of a spot fix to kind of bridge the gap until uh, the work that Slim was going to do where it was ready. Uh, and so Tate did a lot of this work, um, and I think we could confidently say this was this was not even even the spot fixes we did were not trivial. I think, um, and if you want to talk about that at all, Tate. No, like like I said, it just a lot of manual text manipulation that was uh not very generic and we'd probably have to redo it for every new project we did because uh, everything is a little bit different than everything else and then so you end up writing a lot of bash uh for seemingly not a lot of gain when you could just make a couple uh slim cli calls to replace it all and they'll, and they'll do it much much more reliably oh yeah. and you know that you know, for an organization that scales you, you know that that's going to be the same across all the different organizations you don't have a bunch of uh I'd say script maintenance uh, and and, uh, and 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 evolution. Uh, I, I think somebody was trying to talk. Sorry, I talked over you. No, sorry, that, that was me. Uh, I, I remember. I, I think right around the, the the time we start talking about uh, collections, uh, I remember Chris and Tate both telling me that this wasn't uh, as simple as it seemed initially. Um, we definitely hit like a little wall. We were like, oh, this is maybe more more of a complicated problem than we thought. Right. Can you go? Can you advance the slide, Martin, please? Yeah, I think um, you know, the sentiment was, you know, I think, and I think this speaks to, you know, a testimony to the awesome visionaries here at, on the on the payment works team and the practicality to actually do this stuff and do it right. So, this, kudos to this really competent development team. But um, they had a vision pretty fast. They they they, they kind of uh, zeroed in on the idea that, you know, we know that teams that have infinite resources and money, right? Like, and there's 100 of these companies in the world, they actually have developer experience teams that build software that allow their developers to go fast. And it's going fast at doing the things like we described, they build a container pipeline, they build bespoke software that allows them to manage referencing versions of containers, etc. And, and I know um, teams precisely that have done exactly this, they build a self service platform for developers that allow them to go from code to running container quickly and easily. Um, you know, the folks on this, on this, on the payment works team recognize that that's a, the ideal, but also realize it's a lot of work to get there. In fact, they'd rather spend their time working on solving payments, you know, a little problem, like all the world's payment fraud, they'd love to solve that for the universe. That's a pretty important goal. So, you know, writing a lot of scripts is not their primary mission. So they, you know, they kind of, you know, you know, soon on in our, in our, um, in our, in our conversations realize that. You know, they could possibly still get to that ideal. This is kind of, um, you know, confident developer experience for building microservices, but at the same time, you know, you know, take all the, the hard work and the mundane work, uh, all the bookkeeping and all that, and and have a 
kind of a future proof platform that allows them to add more stuff to it with slim and, and i think that was a pretty profound leak um on on your vision but also at the same time uh, you know a lot of uh, great work between us to make it you know start to be a reality so um uh, you know chris and matthias or tate uh, any you know that you know i think for the folks out there that kind of maybe are coming along the same journey um you know and maybe share share additional a couple of additional thoughts about that well I know you, you didn't list me in there, so I'm going to. I'm sorry, Alan. Speak up. You're, yeah, you, yeah. Speak oh, up. Alan, uh, a lot of people that remember. Yeah, no, that's that's cool. Uh, I like giving you a hard time. Um, no, the the only thing I was going to say is what I reiterate what I was saying earlier. You know, as we're, you know, building out our DevOps, and you know, we're making it's it's always a trade-off. But you know, where we're applying our, you know, the engineering folks, and as you're saying, fixing bugs. Not that we have bugs. Uh, Fixing bugs, adding new features, adding you know, improving UX, you know, all the wonderful things that you do, um, you know, as we're trying to uh, improve the whole developer experience, uh, you're making, you know, trades of like what are we, where are we going to prioritize our resources, and having the knowledge that we've got Slim, you know, as this uh, safety net and more than a safety net. Uh, you know, helping us elevate us faster, uh, and so that we can start doing this work, and um, you know, and and be able to go faster, and have, you know, like Chris said in his quote, you know, have the infrastructure of a very large company, um, but it we don't have to go build it ourselves, and have a you know go have a team of engineers uh, doing that, or you know ha hire that expertise or whatever. It just gets we get it with. With the, by working with them, so that's pretty fantastic. From prioritization and figuring out how to uh, increase the velocity of, of the whole company, it's really this is really critical. Awesome, Martin. Can you uh, advance the slide, please? I think um, we we covered a lot of these points uh, at a high level. Um, you know. At, Again, you know, the goals up front were to create this kind of developer uh, self-service and high velocity going from container to prod without a lot of DevOps overhead. And Tate, your, your point about like just, you know, script management to, to glue a process together is hard work. Uh, lots of DevOps people do that every day. It's mundane. It's hard. It's shifting. Uh, and I think, you know, a lot, of the, a lot of what we did was kind of automate that away, and, and, but also setting you up for... Um, the opportunity to kind of continue to expand the use of the system to do the things that I think you know we, we described earlier, like extending it to new microservices easily, to providing optimizations along the way, to giving the developers tools to analyze, interact with containers, and and let them kind of use the the these these, fe these container management features to contextualize and, and do things local and and in prod and make that easy. Anything we didn't talk about that you see as as a future, or is anything here you want to? Payment Works teams wants to ex expand upon for those other folks that are kind of looking for similar transformations. I mean, uh, well, I have one thing I want to add, but I have a question for Tate. It'd probably be informative. Uh, Tate, how long does it take for us to deploy this service compared to our our main application? Oh, don't you can't say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how fast? How fast? Like, what kind of percentage increase you think? It's probably uh, ten plus times faster than our, our monolith deployment. So yeah, much better. Sounds about, sounds about right to me as well. Um, and, you know, just another thing to, to touch on would be um, not that, you know, not that we couldn't do this stuff. Um, like uh, we could, it'd be hard work. It'd be, you know, uh, almost a full-time job for many people. Like it's the, we used to joke about like the tough guy way of doing things. Um, we could write all these scripts and glue them together ourselves and they'll be sufficient and they would probably work. Um, but by not having to do this, we can run leaner and we can focus on what differentiates us as opposed to mm -hmm. trying to rebuild this wheel every time. Um, and I think that the knowledge that Slim brings to the table by working not just with us, but with other teams, um, we get a lot of the best practice stuff kind of sourced uh, to our team, you know, just as part of what leveraging the platform and following the, the best practices that Slim helps outline. So right. um, it allows it us to be, sorry. I was saying it evolves as well, right? Is that correct? We, correct. As you're saying, we could tough guide and get the scripts and get it working. And then we have to maintain that and evolve it. Right, right. We get we get V1, and we don't have time to go back to it. Here we do this one integration, and uh, 
you know, as the Slim platform you know, advances and gets better, like I said, we're getting we're getting all the the future enhancements for free essentially. So it's a uh, it's a really nice like um, return on investment for us that we can do this one piece of work to set up this integration and set this up once, and it's a repeatable solution and um, it gets better over time, which is which is all the things that, that we want, I think, uh, in our our DevOps world. DevX yeah. as a service. We, we we didn't even really touch on uh, uh, some of the other features that uh, Slim offers, like. Uh, um, image optimization, just shrinking our image sizes. Um, uh, right now, this project's at the state where we're just, we've integrated with the Slim developer platform, but we haven't really taken advantage of uh, optimization or security or any of the other things that I'm looking forward to some of those. Well, well, it's a great segue to the next slide. Uh, can, you, can you advance the slide, please? Yeah, so what's next? I think, um, you know, you, you're starting to roll it out. To, to other stuff, and I think you you want to push it towards your developers even further to do some of the things that the team mentioned earlier, like you know having this apply to local environments, etc. We have a bunch of new things coming in the platform all the time. That's what we do. We, we're kind of always evolving this, so you don't have to. And um, and we'll have image optimization there soon, and and you know lots of things changing every day. And and again, then once you've plumbed it into your system, you get the benefits of all the future value that we bring, and we're always doing that. So it's cool. And, um, and I know we're also continuing to automate and improve some of the workflows. One of the things we have in our in our future, uh, not too distant future, is an idea of like a PR that you can do in the in the against the images, right? So it's like uh, I did a PR on the code, but now I built a whole bunch of stuff, and it's got to go to a specific environment. But before I promote it to that environment, I make sure that that the changes that happen to to ready it for that are actually done, and through automation and this kind of um, PR yes. extension, developers can can start to you know say yes I, I I approve those changes to the manifest or the container or by the way I didn't notice that but the base image changed and here's the things that changed in the base image uh, that I can review and make sure that that's all good so there's a whole bunch of good value coming that allow you to manage even more um, more uh, efficiently but um, I think um, yeah any any comments on that stuff I think we're, we're you know getting to the point where we want to start asking for questions from folks. There's your opportunity for those of you that are following along. If you've got questions, I I, I asked earlier, but now's the time to submit them. <laughs> Can we probably advance to the next slide too? So thank you all very much for joining us. Uh, this is where you can find out more about uh, Slim AI and uh, PaymentWorks is hiring uh, and they've got a careers page there. So paymentworks.com slash about dash us slash work dash here. So uh, sounds like a great place to work if you want to be at the cutting edge of automating your uh, infrastructure deployments, uh, then that, that's that's a place to be. Uh, a plus one on that, and they're solving some amazingly hard problems for uh, security and, and, and payments and uh, and doing it quite well. So it's a cool place to work with cool people and great development. So go work at PaymentWorks. It would be awesome. Good PaymentWorks. There you go. Love it. Cool. <laughs> Thank so you, that, guys. That Thank concludes you so much, the everyone. slides. There's no, there's no additional questions at the moment. If we, If you do want to ask us questions, if you're watching this after the fact, uh, you can post your questions on either the YouTube or come to the Slim AI Discord. Uh, the URL is above my head. You'll find a link to our Discord. Ask questions and we'll find the right people to answer any questions that you might have if you've got questions afterwards. And if you're at KubeCon this week and you've arrived here uh, off the back of our virtual booth uh, uh, sort of stream that we did earlier... Um, you can obviously contact us through the KubeCon uh, event this week and uh, we'll hook up, uh, hook you up with the appropriate people. Right, well, thank you all very much for joining us. Is there anything anyone else wants, wants to offer before we uh, put a bow on this? I just want to thank the PaymentWorks team for joining us today. I know it's, uh, you're busy, as I've seen, uh, and doing great work, but uh, it's really, really helpful and I think uh, provided a lot of value today for those who, who are listening, so I appreciate it. Yes, thank you very much. We're happy to be Thanks here. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us, and uh, we look forward to doing more and more Thanks, work guys. together.
Awesome. And um, we'll be back in 24 hours with another stream here where I think we're going to be looking at our findings, analysing the top 100 containers in Docker Hub. So if you are interested to dig into that, be back here tomorrow, same time. Uh, we'll see you then. Awesome. Thanks very wow. much, everyone. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone.